Hey, what's up, fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and this channel is all about knitting. Surprise, surprise. And today I really felt like I wanted to film a quick podcast episode because I just like, I feel like a switch in my brain has flipped and I am in spring mode and there are whips on the needles and they're making progress and progress is coming fast. And so I wanted to sort of share where I was at before all of a sudden there was this whole big new batch of finished objects. So I have one true finished object, which you may have already seen uh, if you watched my last episode, which was all about my Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. And then I have some like kind of finished objects and some super spring whips, which I am like beyond amped about and I just can't stop knitting on them. So I just felt like I needed to talk about it. We're just gonna get started. So first things first, my one true finished object. We are looking at my Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. Now my last episode was about this sweater blouse and this alone. Like I talked about nothing else. The yarn I used, my experience knitting the pattern, all the modifications, so all of the details, probably more of the details than you even want, are all in that video. You can go take a look at it, but just super quickly, I knit this in the Knitting Loft Silk Mohair, which they call Dust, in the color Way Squashed Plums, so it's like this kind of tonal gently variegated purple. There was some like orange and some blue, but it kind of blended out really nicely. It's held double, top down raglan. I knit a size small with modifications for extra ease. So it's kind of more like a medium, but I do think this pattern runs quite large based off of anecdote from a lot of folks. Five millimeter needles. I don't know if I want to say much else about this for fear of repeating an entire video that I've already filmed and uploaded, but I'm obsessed with this. I love it. It's so comfortable. I think it's an absolutely beautiful transitional knit for, at least here in Toronto, it's still quite cold. Um, so really awesome piece for layering and all of that. And I think honestly, with the way the weather is here in Ontario, even on like cooler summer nights, I might get some use out of this. So I'm expecting it to be a really productive contribution to my wardrobe, I suppose. So loving this Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. Check out the whole video if you want all of the nitty gritty, but I'm wearing it because I love it. That's all it is. So. Moving into my next sort of half finished object, the last time I did a proper podcast, I was test knitting the Selena sock for Nicole of Professor Pearl. And I just absolutely adore Nicole. If for folks who don't know Nicole Professor Pearl, she is obviously also a knitter, um, but she is a math teacher educator. So she's like the professor who teaches teachers how to teach math. And for folks who don't know me too well, first of all, hi, um, but I am literally days, days, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like days away from finishing my Master of Teaching program here in Toronto. Um, and so I am going to be qualified for biology and general sciences in high school, but I'm looking to add my qualifications in chemistry and math like really shortly after. Um, so Nicole is just like the brightest spirit, the most positive person. She's created such a good community through her test knitting group. Um, and so I just like, she's just aspirational to me as both a knitter and like the way she speaks about her practice as a knitter and how it relates to her practice as a math educator, I think is, is so insightful and so yes Nicole's just awesome major shout out but I was working on my test knit for her Selena sock when last we spoke and I have finished my first sock so here she is 
isn't it so pretty? Just like, look at that, it's so good. This stitch pattern is so simple. It's just two rows, knits and pearls, different combinations, but it is like so simple, but so engaging. And this is a DK weight sock. So I'll get to the yarns I used. Nicole originally designed the sock to be a DK weight achieved by holding a fingering weight yarn with a mohair, but she purposefully had testers do fingering weight with mohair or just DK weight. Um, and I think everybody's socks came out so, so awesome. Um, but this is mine. It's very, very red. Um, and so I knit mine in a stash yarn. A stash yarn, I mean, I bought it and just kind of sat on it for a while. Well, I didn't literally sit on it. You know what I mean? It sat in my stash for a while. So here I have some Retrosaria Mondine, which is 100% Portuguese wool, fingering weight yarn. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Really high twist, super like awesome bounce, really, really great yarn. It's not like the softest. It's definitely got some like toothiness or some hand to it, but I heard nothing but really great things about this yarn and I wanted to try it. And then when I saw the test knit called for mohair, I was like, ooh, red mohair sock. Yes, yes, please. So here we have Gepard Garn Kid Seta in this like chestnut red color. And just look at that shine. Isn't that just gorgeous? That's one thing, like the dust, this silk mohair from the Knitting Loft, it's their like in-house line. And dust was a really apt name for this because like you get a little bit of shine, but it's nothing compared to like how lustrous the Gepard Garn Kidsetta is. And this is like the softest mohair I've worn next to skin. Um, I haven't worn Gepard Garn Kidsetta next to skin yet, but so far, it is my like all time favorite mohair. So, like that color combo doesn't look like it would be as awesome as it actually turned out to be. Um, I'm just beyond thrilled with this color combo. And so, <clears throat> in honor of Nicole, um, she does this segment when she connects her like teaching practice to her knitting called Professor Pearl's Pearls, um, like gems, words of wisdom. Um, and I was thinking about like what yarns before I like landed on this combination. I knew I wanted to do the test knit because my Make Nine had a textured sock on it and I'd never done a DK weight sock, never done textured socks, never done socks on Magic Loop, never even successfully casted on in Magic Loop. So this was a sock of many firsts. But when I decided I wanted to do the test knit, I did not yet have yarn in mind. And it got me thinking about how knitters are kind of a lot like teachers and our yarns are kind of like our students in the sense that as a teacher, we are responsible for, of course, teaching and using tools and supporting our students with the tools and resources that are going to be most effective for those students' learning needs, basically. So what's going to be most effective for one student may not be effective for another student. And <laughs> I was like, huh, yarn is kind of the same way. and. In fact, for my special education and mental health course, we had to come up with an analogy for teaching. And this is the analogy I used. I was like, as a knitter, I need to pick patterns and tools and yarn combinations that are going to be most appropriate for the yarn that I want to use. Like I'm not gonna use just 100% silk for a sock. It doesn't make sense. And so that was just like my little musing, you know, we pick 
yarns and tools that are well suited to the projects that we have in mind. And so if you're interested in knitting the Selena sock by Professor Pearl, the pattern is out now. So definitely pick it up and do knit it. I think it looks super, super awesome in like kind of heathered colorways, kind of solid colorways, but I've also seen some really cool, like really, really, really cool variegated ones. And so, yeah, that was just like my reflection on <laughs> intentionality and in knitting and teaching and, you know, picking the appropriate tools that are just going to make beautiful things. I don't know. Nicole, let me know what you think if you're watching. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this. It like, I started it, I had a pretty big pause, like when last I showed you, I was just ready for the heel. And then once I picked up and did the heel, I did like the whole heel and foot and toe in like a couple of days, really, really quick. Um, much, much, much quicker than any of the fingering weight socks I have knit yet. <laughs> One second. So this is the first time I actually blocked a pair of socks. You might be able to tell it's like beautiful and nicely shaped. Uh, and I don't own a sock blocker. So I think I'll link it if I find it down below. But I think someone might be, I think it was Orsa Knits, not well loved knits. I think it was Orsa Knits who has a tutorial on how to make a sock blocker with some cardboard. And so that's what I did. It looks so <laughs> sketchy. Or not sketchy, just like very different from the really gorgeous, like laser cut engraved wooden ones that folks like to show on their channels. And like, those are absolutely beautiful, but I've never blocked my socks before, like I said, and I just don't feel the need for really fancy socks blockers. So I traced a sock that I really like the fit of. I taped it up with a few layers of tape. I just had this cardboard box hanging around and I put the kind of damp sock on the sock blocker and it did the trick. It did the trick. So if you're ever in a pinch for a sock blocker, can't go wrong with this or even if you have like if you're knitting socks for a gift for somebody and you'd love them to be blocked but they have a very different sized foot from you you could ask I mean if you're close enough to this person you can ask them for a sock that they like the fit of and do this very easily yourself or um, if you know the person's foot's a lot larger or a lot smaller than yours just kind of add or take away from the tracing of a sock that fits you. Of course, making sure that like the inches for the foot length uh, is appropriate. So <laughs> I see no difference between what I've achieved here and what I would achieve with like a $40 sock blocker. So the Selena Sock by Professor Pearl, a very, very exciting half finished object. Now, I did not even use half of either of these. I think for the second pair, I will get close to finishing this skein of mohair or ball of mohair, but I will probably still only be like a little beyond halfway through this cake of yarn this was 100 grams and I think I used less than 25 grams for the first sock so I'm gonna have a lot of leftovers and I'll figure out what to do with them um but I'm gonna couch this for a while before I cast on the second sock because like I said something in my brains just switched and I am in spring mode and I would say this is more of like a cozy fall slash winter slash snuggly sock and so when I'm feeling like my sock mojo is on the rise I'll pick this back up and do the second sock it's just me rationalizing my second sock syndrome but what are you gonna do the Selena sock by Professor Pearl 
absolutely awesome so much fun pick up the pattern it should be out now i'll link it down below all of the project bags you're gonna see were um super generous gift from my friend jenny of honeybird studio and she recently started after a very long hiatus um posting her own podcast episodes again um and she also shares her own project bags from time to time there so thanks jenny these are still bringing me so much joy okie dokie next project that is like kind of done kind of not really done but i'm gonna show them to you anyway is this tangled mess okay where what do we got here so i whew, I move that out of the way. Okay. Oh, still tangles. Here we go. As part of my make nine, I had said that I wanted to start using up a whole bunch of my scraps. And one of the things that I wanted to make were coasters because I really like icy drinks. I like coffee with loads of ice. I like super icy water. Is that the healthiest thing for you? I don't know, but I think the healthy thing is the thing that makes me happy. Well, I mean, that doesn't apply to everything. In the case for, of drinking water, I like iced water. It's not that big a deal. But what that means is I often get sweaty glasses and when they sit on my desk, they ruin it. So I thought it would be neat to use up my scraps to make some coasters. And so these are what I have so far. This one is Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Robin mixed with my leftover Malabrigo lace and silk paca, both in the colorway Archangel. And I knit a hat with these like last fall and I absolutely love these colors, um, but there's not really enough of them left to do anything else significant other than like another hat, um, maybe, maybe not even, maybe a headband, but I have other headbands in the works. So I wanted to use these up for something that I thought would like really make the colors look interesting. So this one, I mixed the Knitting for Olive. Robin, I made some mistakes with the counting here and so it looks a little offset, but this is really just like, I think it's called a, a miter square. Somebody tell me if I'm pronouncing that right. Where you like cast on a whole bunch of stitches and then you do central double decreases every other row to, here you can see how it got offset better on this side. You do central double decreases every other row and it basically makes this long row of stitches. So like these two edges combined would have been what I cast on, um, I think, maybe not. Maybe these two edges are what I cast on. Doesn't really matter all that much. So uh, yeah, that's this one. And then this one are the same two, Malabrigo yarns and I'm holding them with some leftovers. This is the Chateau from Color of My Fiber, MCN. And this is what we have. I think this one's really cool. I really love this color combination. Um, and so what I have left to do for both of these are to use this like really mini crochet hook to add tassels on the opposite sides of each coaster. So it looks like a little mug rug. Um, I'm really excited about these and I'm definitely gonna just like keep making more as a set. I think this would be super awesome. Um, so just a plug for stash busting. You can come up with some like yarn combinations using stash yarns that you might not have thought to do initially. So stash busting, good for your creativity good for making some quick gifts or palette cleansers just some fun little squares and i think also um i'll find the blanket pattern but i think there's a free blanket pattern that's basically just you make a whole bunch of these using all your sock scraps brilliant that's probably also in my future as long as i keep knitting at this rate at least so 
those are my little mug rugs in progress. They're not like super urgent. I work on them very occasionally. But where my attention has been going for the past little while are toward these two camisoles that I recently cast on. So Stacy Stress Knits is hosting the Thank You Next Make Along. Such a cute name, so clever. And basically before I even finished my cumulus blouse, I was already thinking about casting on all the camisoles, all the summer knits. Um, really, really excited about it. And I have the camisole number five pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear in my pattern stash. And it's part of my make nine. And I was honestly procrastinating casting it on because I was a bit scared of the pattern. It like starts with a provisional cast on and I'm like, oh, I don't like provisional cast ons very much. So I was procrastinating on it, but I was like, you know what? It's time. I've had the yarn in stash since January. I bought it on Boxing Day, so it's time. So I basically in one and a half days in a weekend, essentially made all of this progress on a camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. So this pattern is, uh, pretty like popular, I think. This is a fingering weight tank top with a really high neck and like a narrow sort of neckline. So it really comes in close to the shoulders and then opens up, which I think is super cool. And on my own body type, I find it very flattering or I feel very confident when I wear things with that kind of shape. So I'm really excited to have this fingering weight camisole. I am using, I'm just doing this to the spec of the pattern pretty much, uh, three millimeter needles. These are my Leica Indigo fixed circulars, three millimeter needles. I think this is like a 40 centimeter in total. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but these are the needles I use for basically all of my camisoles. It's the perfect circumference. I find for camisole knitting and I am using the Knitting for Olive Merino in Dusty Green. I think this color is just so gorgeous. This is like perfect. I think one thing that I often think about when I'm selecting yarn colors is whether or not I feel the color can work for both spring and fall or summer and winter. And I think this color for me really does. This is like a neutral green. It's probably coming off as super gray on camera, but it's like a sage kind of slate green. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. A really nice, soft, gentle green color. And so I'm knitting the size medium and I've purchased three balls of yarn. For my camisole number two, I didn't even use two full balls of yarn, but my plan for this is to knit it longer. And because the back panel is more coverage than the back of camisole number two, I think I probably will go pretty far into the third ball of yarn. But the constriction of this pattern is so brilliant. I think it starts out a little unintuitively, but then you fall into the rhythm of it. And at this point, like really once I got to here, even in terms of like these increases, these really cool increases that come off the strap, I got, I'm, I'm off, off book, off book now. Um, I've got like the sequence memorized. And so it doesn't start intuitively, but it becomes intuitive. And for the first time now, believe it or not, I've never done this before for like raglans or increases or anything. I'm actually counting the number of repeats I've done and I don't know why I've not done this before, but I am really, really eager to have this in my wardrobe. Um, it's gonna probably slow down for the next little bit because I need 
another three millimeter like helper needle that I do not own. So I ordered a pair of Chiaogu Red Lace 40 inch three millimeter needles. So a really long cable and I thought that would be a good option because my Lika interchangeable set doesn't go as far down as three millimeters. I don't think they sell needle tips that small. Um, and so I thought rather than getting DPNs or another short circumference pair of three mil needles for like sock knitting, I could get a really long fixed circular that would be suitable for working magic loop or large circumferences in the future. Although I don't know when I'll knit. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Sweater? That large of a circumference basically. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I just thought it was the right choice. And so that's my camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And the last whip I have to show you is related to my one and only acquisition for now. The only thing I've really purchased recently. So I got kind of on a whim. Look at that. Ooh. Oh my gosh. This is Farmer's Daughter Fibers Juicy DK Speckles in the Colorway Spring Fever. I am, like I said, days away from finishing my Master of Teaching program. I am a week away from finishing my practice teaching block. I'm going to be starting a new job next week. So I thought it was an appropriate time to just like congratulate myself on all of these like pretty big accomplishments. I also have interviews this week for uh, next school year with some school boards. So like I deserved, I deserved an acquisition. And normally I really am so thoughtful when I go in to purchase yarn. I go in on a mission and I leave with exactly what I go in for and nothing more, nothing less. I do pride myself on that, but on this particular day, I was like, I just want to go and see what inspires me. And typically it's not speckles, but on this particular day, I saw this and I honestly fell in love. I'm head over heels obsessed with this. It is a cream or like a natural undyed base, 100% uh, superwash merino. Um, and it's called Juicy DK, but it is a heavy sport or a light DK. Um, and it's got all of these like purple and magenta and yellow speckles. If you've been watching for a while, it might remind you of Chateau from Color of My Fiber. But Chateau was definitely more of like a pinky purple, like really pastel color story. Uh, and the speckling was a lot softer. This, I would say the speckles are certainly more vibrant and in your face and like lively. I think Spring Fever is a good, apt, appropriate name for this yarn. So I got two skeins of Farmer's Daughter Fiber Juicy DK in Spring Fever. Ta-da! She's beautiful. And I am knitting the Vegas top by Suzanne Muller. And now ooh, I should double check the camisole number five. But the first thing I want to say about this is I don't think it's a size inclusive pattern. It goes from a 32 to a 50 inch bust. And because this is a light DK weight yarn, I have to knit like the fourth size to fit myself. I am a 37 inch bust, 155 pounds, five foot eight. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think it's the most size inclusive pattern, but I've owned the pattern for quite some time. I've owned it since before size inclusivity was something that was on my radar. So I do plan on reaching out to the, to the designer to see if they intend to expand the size range because Really, I think this particular top could be, I mean, I don't know really much about designing, but 
I mean, it doesn't have sleeves or anything like that. So I think the amount of design work that goes into grading a tank may not be as extensive as what goes into grading a sweater, but I could be completely ignorant. I don't know, but not the most size inclusive pattern I've seen. But I've owned this pattern for a while and I felt it would be really appropriate for this yarn. So basically the Vegas top is a DK weight tank, pretty thick straps, a pretty high back, relatively high neck. So I think appropriate for, you know, my lifestyle as a teacher, like the classroom can get warm, but I still want to have like a tasteful amount of coverage, even if I'm wearing a sleeveless top. And then you've got an I-cord neck and I cording around the armholes, which I now know how to do because of my cumulus blouse. And so really all I've done <laughs> for this so far is cast it on and knit as much of the back panel as I could before getting to the increases for the armhole. And so this is what we're working with so far. It's not much, but it's here and so I thought if I'm filming I ought to show it and the speckles are starting to land where they're landing which I think that's what's going to make this knit most exciting seeing how the colorway sort of plays out um but yes my little stripe or strip of the Vegas top by Suzanne Muller so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed for, for me what it was a really fast and furious feeling episode. I usually talk for a lot longer than I expect and this actually went faster than I expected. So thanks for hanging out. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed. I'd love to know what make-alongs or knit-alongs you're planning to get involved with the next couple of months or what you're excited to have on your needles in the new season. Um, I hope you're all really well. If your seasons are changing, I hope that the new season brings you some level of joy, something to look forward to, something different, really. Um, things are good here. I'm very grateful to say. Um, I've got some like knit and chat videos in the works. And so I think it's good. I got quite a few whips going right now, but until I get to sit down and knit and chat with you, I'm just going to wish you all some good health, some safety, some great weather and happy knitting. Bye everyone.